Come on and talk about it, talk about it, talk about it Come on and talk about it, talk about it, talk about it Come on and talk about it, talk about it, talk about it Come on and talk about it, oh what that goes Come on and talk about it, talk about it, talk about it Come on and talk about it, oh what that goes Hey everyone, I'm Montana Jones with the Black and Brown Theater and you're watching Taco Talk, the show where we eat delicious tacos and ask even better questions. And today we're joined by Josh Ambrano, the actor who plays Prince Jacob in Black and Brown Theater's upcoming Rapunzel and in the live performances we had this past summer. Uh, Josh currently works at the Chicago High School for the Arts as a teaching artist while also being a part of the thriving theater scene in Chicago in many different facets. Welcome to Taco Talk, Josh. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Super excited to be here. And I'm some excited tacos. to have you here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm a Chicago native. I was born and raised in the city um, in the like Portage Park neighborhood, La Morsa neighborhood. And um, what I do now is teach at my alma mater. So I went to and graduated from the Chicago High School for the Arts, otherwise known as Shy Arts. I went there as an acting major. And after graduating from college in Colorado, be gone a couple of years, I came back. Uh, always knew that I wanted to come back to acting, so I immediately started working in the city, doing as many professional plays and like commercial work as much as I could. Uh, and then I ended up being asked to teach back in my old school for a couple of different classes and then ended up making my way back to the theater department where I've been teaching. Uh, so this last year I've taught um, pretty much all of the grades, uh, freshmen all the way through seniors. Um, in a bunch of different subjects, including on camera, um, including Shakespeare, August Wilson, all of those kinds of things. So uh, very, very fulfilling work. And uh, on the side, I'm still trying to, you know, keep that acting gig going, connect with <laughs> uh, directors, casting directors, and uh, do all kinds of work and tell amazing stories. So that's what I'm trying to do. Amazing. And what a full circle moment coming back to your high school and working. That's amazing. It it's weird it's a very <laughs> it was a very weird feeling the first year when like half of the teachers were my old teachers and then they were like no call me this instead and i'm like i, I can't i'm I can't. sorry i, I cannot call, call you, you by your first name that's weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but then i grew my beard and now it's fine now i can do that Super easy. <laughs> now you're like one of them you're an adult now too like no. yeah I, I made the really bad mistake of my first couple of years just because acting stuff i kept my face shaved mm -hmm. but that meant that i looked like i was like 17 because i do have like a really young looking face uh -huh. so yeah. i mean i'm 27 now but when i started teaching i was 22 right so i was 22 fresh out of college with a baby face freshly shaved was playing teenagers on stage and in commercials and stuff so like the security guards would be like hey where are you going and i'm like i, I teach here i have to go to my class and yeah. and teach these students right i'm wearing a full suit so that way you know that i'm not just like a student here but uh, that's what i'm like it's I've, I've matured i've grown yeah <laughs> they know me now so so what tacos do you have in front of you josh oh. Oh, Montana, I got two awesome taco, two types of tacos. I got three of them because one of them I love so much that I had to get two of them. Um, <laughs> so I have your classic uh, taco de carne asada. Um, and then I also have a uh, taco de quesabiria, which is, it just means that the taco itself is like dipped in this like broth that makes it a little more red, a little more flavorful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got a lot of cheese and then it's also got some al pastor on top of it. So very that excited to jump into those so good oh what do you got God. that sounds so good all right so i have a pollo taco mm -hmm. um i have a chorizo taco and then mm -hmm. i also have um a, a carne asada taco as well i think okay. you, you said you had one of those as well right yeah i got so we'll we'll, we'll be we'll be sharing and we'll be sharing we'll we can, share, we can, right, we can right. uh, compare and contrast yes <laughs> okay amazing uh which one do you want to pick up first uh <sighs> I got two of the quesadilla, so I'll go that. I like to mix it up, you know, so I'll have some of my birria, I'll have my carne asada, and I'll close out with my birria again. Awesome. I think I'm going to, the chorizo's kind of calling my name. Uh -huh. <laughs> go for it, go for it, go for it. it. so good. Yeah, and I don't know about you, but I'm a salsa man. Like, oh, yeah. um, every time, it doesn't matter what I'm eating, if there's some kind of sauce or <laughs> salsa that goes along with it, I need, I need it. I need it on my plate. And salsa verde is the go-to. 
go to. And I love garlic. a good like medium spice salsa. Mm. That's what I need. Just a little kick. I love uh -huh. it. That's what it is. Dip it in there. Are you? Do you like spicy in general? Or mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. That's good. That's like chorizo is always my favorite because I love I love the kick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's actually a pretty good taco. I've never been to this place before. I saw it on um. <laughs> on the grub hat and i was like okay perfect i'll try <laughs> this place is 24 7 all right oh, seriously so, oh, i know that they've got to be mm -hmm. and the name was all in spanish oh. it was like, al pastoria or something and i was like it doesn't have a number in it so it's not quite as like fully authentic you know what i'm saying because if it's like mm -hmm. put down number three then you're like oh snap oh snap <laughs> you know that they're gonna have some good food but this place is still delicious so yeah. Oh yeah, and twenty four seven sounds amazing. You're gonna get a taco whenever you want. Mm -hmm. Good okay. eats, good eats. So, my first question for you is how you got started in acting. So, like, mm -hmm. um, before high school, then I guess because you know you went to a performing arts high school, so of course you were somewhat interested in high school. But before then, how did you get your start in the theater? That's a great question. Um, I got to talk and eat taco at the same time. It's great. Um, <laughs> so I started in, um, I started acting um, in, uh, for a couple of different projects at like church and just um, through personal projects of my dad in particular. Mm -hmm. um, he was a videographer, director, camera person for a TV station uh, out here in Chicago. And um, he got laid off and started doing like freelance work. So a lot of videography stuff. So I was behind the camera a lot, but there were some points where for commercials, he would ask me to like, you know, hop in to shoot for like, I remember a dentist commercial where I had to like pretend to get hit by a car and like pop up and it's very embarrassing. And my <laughs> friends found it one time, um, but that was like my first taste of acting. And I didn't really think I was acting all that much in there. It was just like, oh, this is a some help my dad needs. Um, and then he wrote a play for church um, called Mirage Lounge. It was like some just like basically week long special where every day of the week we would put on the show and like people would come and like hang out. And it was set up to be like almost like an interactive theater thing where people were sitting around. All the actors were like at tables pretending to be different couples, telling different stories all the time. Yeah. And I was very stereotypical, like angry a gamer boy on his little <laughs> like game boy being like ah oh, steal kill uh. and i was like oh, i don't know about that and i had like two lines so um that was like my first dipping my toes into acting but where it really shined uh or where i really found a love for it was my eighth grade year i was always a really really shy kid i talked a lot to like my friends but in general i was pretty shy i didn't like uh like being in front of people all that much Mm -hmm. And um, eighth grade year was my last year at my um, K through eight school, right, where all my friends, I'd been with them for like, you know, f at least five years for all of them. So um, they were like, Josh, it's the last year you have to do the drama club because we're going to do the play. You've never done the play with us and it's going to be Wizard of Oz. It's going to be a blast. Like, you, you got to do it. You have, you have to do it. And they like basically peer pressured me into like, hopping on joining the drama club and i was like i don't even know anything about this whatever and then we did drama club and at one of the first meetings for that club um we were required to pick out monologues and i was like i don't even know what a monologue is right but <laughs> um i'm a huge nerd so it's just one person talking uh i'll do something from one of my favorite movies and i did like a monologue from lord of the rings at two towers right there's there's a monologue where it's uh it's not really a monologue i guess it's smeagol talking to himself where he's mm -hmm. like fighting between his two like different sides which i mean that's a, that's a monologue right monos yeah one, yeah one yeah, yeah. and i i was able i could do the voice i haven't practiced the voice in a while but like i i at, growing up i'd always practice these like weird voices and like just made weird sounds and stuff so i was able to do the voice pretty well do a pretty good impression so i was like bet i'm gonna make that my uh monologue and I did it for the first time. And it was just like me and like eight of my friends who were in drama club and like their faces afterwards were just like, what the heck was that? 
and not even like that blew me away but also like what the heck was that right, right. but to me that was something that was so i think alluring and entrancing this idea that i could have an effect on someone like that right yeah. i could tell some story and showcase a different person's perspective yeah. um and so went from that i always love playing that bad guys too just because they're so fun so like i did that then i did a joker monologue and you know scared my friends a little bit and then after that we did casting for wizard of oz and i really wanted the cowardly lion just because i could do the like put him up put him up like that weird voice yeah so right I did that uh did the school play loved it um just had a blast with my friends and then um, that eventually led to my mom pushing me towards um, auditioning for uh, Shy Arts. So it was a school because she could see that I had a really deep passion for it, that it was something that like um, was special um, in my repertoire. Even though I'd always loved like science and animals and stuff like this, this was just a whole different avenue that suddenly exploded. And I um, didn't want to audition for the school at first. Cause I thought I was like, this is going to be some like high school musical fame thing. Like, I don't want to do that. What? And then I auditioned for the school and it truly was in um, the initial audition process, meeting the teachers who were professional actors, who were professional directors, working with them, just even in that small room, meeting the people that I would eventually go on to spend the next four years learning with and from um, that I fell in love with that process. Um, and immediately after the first audition, I told my parents, I was like, I want to go back, right? I, ho I hope, yeah. I really hope I get a call back. I really hope that I get to, um, like go to the school and I was, uh, blessed to be able to do that. And so <laughs> that kind of began my acting journey. So it was kind of on accident, uh, in like the happiest of ways. Yeah. The best accident. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're, of course you're teaching at Shy Arts now, mm -hmm. but what would you say was your favorite part about like going to a performing arts school? Like, was it the closeness of people who are just as passionate as you or like maybe learning new traits? Like, was it just theater performance at this at this school? Yeah, th there definitely is that, right? There's a camaraderie that you feel with all of your um, ensemble members. That was like one of the key things that I, I, I still try to teach in my classes, but that was very much laid into the foundation and curriculum of the school was like, you have an ensemble, you all are creating work together and moving yeah. through these classes together, right? So at least at our school, you take your academics in the morning and then every day, right? And from like two to five, every single day you take your arts classes. And so because of that, and that's still how it is. So every day from two to five, I was with the same group of people working on different classes, whether that's stage combat, whether that's movement, whether that's acting, whether that's Shakespeare, whether that's like any specific kind of class, I was working with the same group of people all the time. So those bonds in that classroom really got tested and built, yeah. right? And then, um, and then also flexed, you know, because it, it put pressure on you and, and forced you to kind of either, um, basically it forced you to make a decision on whether this was something that you were going to want to do. And I think that that's the best way of doing it. I love like fully immersing myself in something and just like getting really deep into those things um, in whatever I do uh, a lot of the time. So um, when it came to acting, this was like the best way for me to experience it because I was doing it every day. I was doing it with a group of people that, like you said, yeah, we're passionate about it. Um, you know, by junior year, senior year, some people, are, some of the students are like, ah, this isn't for me. And you're like, that's cool. But those yeah, that yeah. do find that like, oh, this is for me, right? You take full advantage of, if you do take full advantage of, you know, talking with your teachers, uh, going out of your way to do like out of outside of school uh, performances or competitions and stuff like that and get coaching for your acting stuff. There was a lot of resources that were that was available and a lot of performance opportunities that really flexed the my performance muscles. Right. That like now as an actor, I can, you know, tell me to do anything on stage and I can walk out in front of a group of, you know, a thousand people and do that. Uh, dancing, uh, maybe singing. Ooh, that's 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 I get nervous still for those things. Right. But when it comes to just like when it comes to acting and just like, oh, yeah, you have this monologue. Go ahead and do it in front of like two thousand people. I'm like, yeah. OK, I could I could do that. Uh, and it's because of like the rigor of that school. Um, 
And again, it was from like eight in the morning till five every day. That was just like normal school. And then you had performances after that. And then you had, you know, um, if you had tech for a show, you were staying there till like 10 p.m. and stuff like that. So it was a really crazy schedule. But then I went to college. Right. And I went to college for science because I was like, yeah. I want to learn something different because I've, I done, ask you about that. I've yeah, about... done acting for so long. Yeah. Uh, and it was like comparatively so easy, so easy. So <laughs> the, like the schedule just, I think, really, again, that level of rigor was like, OK, I can I can handle anything. Right. I'm waking up at right. five in the morning to go to school, eating because it was an hour and a half at the time mm-hmm. when I was going to high school uh to get there so it was like waking up at like 5 5 30 in the morning to take the train to get down there and then i'll do that and then i wouldn't get home till like 6 30 and it was it was like 12 hour day just doing that but then you were with this amazing group of friends yeah. um that like helped make it worthwhile um so yeah i'd say that there, there was a lot there was a lot, a lot <laughs> you know, your schedule sounds like like a bfa conservatory type schedule like eight to eight to five with like rehearsals like ending around 10 like that's what people do at like these like top you know musical theater programs mm-hmm. that's that's insane that's absolutely yeah. insane and and that that is uh kind of what led me to making my decision when i went to college to not pursue a bfa right yeah. um i mentioned I've always had an interest in like animals and science and those kinds of things so um, when I was choosing which college programs to go to I was really looking at um, options is what I wanted I didn't want to be stuck in one conservatory taking classes covering things that I had like already at least like been taught in a classroom mm-hmm. setting i was like i don't want to yeah. do that you know i don't want to just sit because a lot of the programs also like they don't let you perform your first year or you can't right. do any professional work and i'd been working professionally from like 14 just doing like extra stuff right uh on chicago's huge for tv and stuff now at least it oh, yeah. started booming around the time i was in high school so um a bunch of different shows i was able to get extra work on and like just auditioning for different projects yeah. and commercials that like i've been doing that and when sometimes i go to a bfa they're like no you can't do any outside work you have to commit yourself to just this program and i did not um so the college i ended up going to was colorado college it was a liberal arts school in the middle of colorado which is one of my favorite places in the u.s yeah. and um i got to just like learn about so many other things and i love learning um yeah and that's you know well uh, yeah well do you have any specific questions about this and so oh we yeah can... and i was gonna say i think that's like one thing about like actors that every that we all have in common is like our love just to learn more and want to know more so yeah. of course like when you're stepping into a character you can't just take what's that face value about the character mm-hmm. you can deep dive into the character and the scenario and the scene and the relationship so i think that's a, I mean, that's a, it's a very common trait, right, with actors' yeah. profession. But I guess so. Knowing that, right, you majored in in science, mm-hmm. um, in your undergrad, is there like how did you participate in theater, or did you participate like in theater or like clubs or acting clubs or things like that that had to do with the arts in yeah. school, so that you could keep you know your your acting muscle strong? Absolutely, absolutely, I did though. I was. Um because it was a liberal arts school, right? This, mm-hmm. The school had a small but really committed film department mm. um, of a bunch of, you know, just kids, students who wanted to learn how to make film and, you know, do stuff. So there was yeah. uh, always a constant flow of student-led projects for on-camera, um, but there was also a really cool um theater scene at the school that was led by students again most of the stuff at this college was like student-led student-driven there were like um actual theater department shows as soon as i got to campus they had auditions for like incoming freshmen Mm -hmm. to do um a department show and so i got to do that and meet a lot of really awesome friends there just like jumping right into the theater scene and like making a connection with a cast of like 20 people for a big show it was like oh snap okay these are my people great awesome. yeah <laughs> that's good to know um and so uh yeah but there was a, a really cool like i said theater scene where uh students and student directors could 
uh, basically go up to the student-led board of the theater and you know requisition budgets and scheduling time for them to be able to put up productions. Um, so I got to work with a lot of really cool, passionate directors in those pieces. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that um, the biggest advantage to going to college was that on-camera experience for me. Yeah. Um, just because that wasn't something I had a lot of in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I did take an on-camera class at Shy Arts, and that was something that like I stuck out to me, but it was uh, the, the practice of actually being on camera, working on set. And again, I had done like, I had sat on the other side of the camera with working with my dad. Yeah. So uh, it was just about really getting that practice in, in college. Um, and I think my sophomore year for like a semester, I didn't do any acting. I was just, I was taking a couple hard science classes. So I was like, let me just focus on this and just <laughs> see, you know, like what's happening. And by the end of the semester, I was like, I need something. I was like hungry. I was like, I need to yeah. make something. I need to be a part of something. I need to tell stories. Cause right now I'm just like in the world, but I'm not actively like breaking or like building connections with people. And it felt very frustrating to me, yeah. which was validating, right? That like, oh no, this is what I, this is what I want to do. What I need to do is to go out and tell stories. So yeah. Now, before I ask my next question, I think we should dive into another taco. Oh, absolutely. I think I'm gonna grab my pollo one. It's calling my name right now. Pollo, yeah. I oh, got yeah. here my carne asada taco. Now here, here, I, I consider a carne asada taco to be a true test of any taqueria, right? Oh, yeah. Cause it's like a staple. If they get their carne asada right, then like, you know, you're gonna be in for a good time. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is mm -hmm. good. The salsa is so good. Mm -hmm. And they do. Dang. Mm, that's good. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. While you're chewing, I'm going to ask you um, the question. So you said, of course, that like right out of undergrad, you came back to Shy Arts and mm -hmm. have everything correct. You started as a science teacher before you became a teaching artist at the school. Mm -hmm. So like, I guess I wanted to like how, what was that like, like teaching a, like a general education class with a ton of performing artists, right? But then also like your transition from a science teacher to a teaching artist, like what that transition looked like for you as well. Sure, it was the weirdest thing. I, mean, I, was gonna <laughs> say, I never thought I was gonna be a teacher, right? Mm -hmm. Um. um I recently actually finally got diagnosed with like ADHD and anxiety and generalized anxiety. And I was like, oh my gosh, this all makes perfect sense. Looking back yeah. at every chapter of my life, right? Like, oh my <laughs> gosh, look at all these like dots getting connected. Yeah. And a big part of that was um, like in high school uh, and in college, I was like, huh, teaching. I, I really liked that idea. And I had a, a couple of instances of like working with kids um, in my summers between college um, like when I was back here in Chicago, I would work for different programs that were like tutoring and mentorship programs and something about working with youth, specifically high school youth, I think because um, at the time when I was in high school, I my church had like a really, really impactful youth program mm -hmm. um, that I was a part of and just like getting mentorship from older people and stuff like that was uh, or helped me in particular a lot. And so there was something about like being in college and then working with high schoolers and talking with them and helping them, uh, you know, pass their classes and like learn about science. Right. And then yeah. so taught acting in like one of those summer programs, which is like my first actual experience being a teaching artist. Um, but it was like very quick, like a couple of weeks of like classes, with, like two or three students. Right. Like very, very small stuff. Um, and then it wasn't until I graduated college immediately moved back to Chicago and uh, got cast in my first professional show in that fall. And while I was just like looking for part-time work, uh, heard that Shy Arts had a couple of like uh, recruitment positions where you would go to like uh, elementary schools and just talk about it. Right. And I was like, mm -hmm. 
I'm an alum, right? Like if there's anyone who's going to talk about going to the school, what it's like, what are the, you know, pros and cons, like that's me, right? I've been right. here. I know the programs. That's, that's, I know what it's like to be a student here, right? Yeah. So I uh, interviewed for one of those and in the interview, the principal came in to like chat and just, you know, catch up with me. And he had been my biology teacher, my freshman year of high school and was now the principal of the school. So once uh, I left that interview, I was like, that's crazy. What the heck? This guy is like now the principal, he's in charge of everything. And the next day he gives me a call out of nowhere and he's like, hey, um, we had a biology teacher who had to leave. It was like three weeks into the school year. I was like, she had an emergency, she had to leave. Um, and so we need, we're looking for someone to pick up her classes. I know yeah. you graduated with a degree in biology. Would you be willing to come teach? And I was like, I was like, when would I start? They're like, you'd start Monday if you could. It was like Thursday or something. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, let me get back to you on that. And like, <laughs> I sat, I was like with my parents at the time. So I was just like talking to them. And I was like, I don't like, this seems crazy. I've never thought of myself as a teacher. And like my anxiety was like, you know, you know, I don't know if you have any, I'm sure everyone has some anxiety feelings, yeah. right? But like this feeling of just like everything sitting up here mm-hmm. and I kind of just decided, I was like, screw it. I think I just got to like jump in the deep end. This is something that I think I firmly believe happened for a reason. So I was like, let's see where this goes, right? (laughs) And so that Monday morning, uh, like no prep or anything, I just, I walked in. Um, I had a great science team um, at the school that was super supportive and like helping guide me and like what I needed to do and just support me to make sure I had the tools at my disposal. Yeah. Um, and then I got to meet the kids. And honestly, that's always like every year when I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to do this again. Then you go and you meet the kids and you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, like, this, this is worth it. This is um, yeah. So that, that first year in building those connections was uh, something that uh, really, really, like I said, fulfilled me in a way yeah. that no other work I would really done was able to. It's different than, than art. Um, right. Similar, but they're very different in like what the um, outcomes are. Mm-hmm. And I think there was even a moment where I was teaching science and some of my uh, one of my students was who was a freshman uh, I was teaching biology at that point to freshmen and juniors and seniors. And um, there was something just personal going on in the student's life. And I had like a meeting with a parent and like was like encouraging them at the end of it and like the you know the, with the parent as they were leaving was just like saying thank you so much and like the kid was like looking at me and as they left i just like had the lights off in my room and i just cried for like 10 minutes and i was like yeah. oh my gosh i think i think i just did something right like i think i don't yeah i, I like you very rarely do i think you get to have the realization that you've impacted someone's life, even if it's a small way, but I was like, okay, I think that kid needed that. And Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that that, you know, helps set them on a healthy uh, course, right? And that they hope maybe remember that. I don't know, right? But maybe, and I was like, and it it, it really moved me um, in that moment to know that that's the kind of work that teachers do every day right yeah. like i i've known i've gotten to meet so many incredible academic teachers um and just the work that they do is in, is so hard um and, and incredible and, and and you you got to touch on it earlier when you were sharing your story right about how you got into mm-hmm. the theater but it's so interesting cuz i feel like a lot of people in the theater also get into teaching theater in uh-huh. some capacities as well and i think it's that same feeling of like when you're on stage sharing a story knowing that you're touching people you're moving people right that that the work that you're performing is changing them in some way. Yeah. The same light as, like you said, as a teacher that you have all these students and like, you don't ever realize it until of course, you know, you're in your position and, and, and you're teaching students that what, like a, what big of an impact, you know, a teacher can make on a student, even at the performing arts school as a science teacher. Right. Yeah. Like um, it's, it's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And these, these teachers are super dedicated. Um, they they've had to learn to empathize with the students i think on a different level right yeah. because you see and this is something i learned too my first year teaching there where i was just doing um uh, academic stuff mm-hmm. you see a student in the academic setting 
right? And especially in science, right? They might be struggling, they might not like it, so they might be one way. And then you yeah. see them on stage, either dancing or acting or singing or playing guitar or piano. And it's a, it's like a completely different person. And you see them come to life and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I have to I have to remember where I am in the school system that I'm in right now and like how mm. that is geared towards these kinds of students and that a lot of times it's not right so it was right. like okay I have to kind of get over my own ego of being like oh you should everyone should love science oh, blah 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 but like yeah. no they found their thing they're here for it um and I did have plenty of students that did like science uh, that enjoyed the classes but like mm. you know you can't you can't win everyone and so that was a big I think learning experience for me. Yeah, and then speaking of that shift, right, from a student, a performing arts student in a science class to mm -hmm. being on stage, I kind of want to know like how that shift was for you, you know, going as a science teacher to now being a teaching artist, like what, yeah. what kind of shifted? Yeah. yeah. So my first year when I was teaching academics, I was crazy and I decided to also be subbing um, in the arts departments. So mm -hmm. a lot of times I would teach from like 7.30 to two o'clock and, or one o'clock. And then from two to five, I would pick up, uh, you know, any, um, classes that needed supervision and like just yeah. going over sub stuff. And so I, I was able to, at least in that way, slowly dip my toe into like teaching or uh, being an arts teacher at the school. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, a former student was teaching an acting class and they had to leave because they picked up another job. And so the head of the uh, acting department, this was the following year, my second year teaching, I was teaching physics this time. Um, mm -hmm. And during that year, the teacher had brought me in and I was like, hey, uh, one of our teachers is leaving because of a job, um, but we know we can plan for that. Would you mind, like, would you be able to pick up and teach this one acting class like yeah. every couple of days? And I felt so insecure because of the fact that I didn't get college training, right? Like I got high school level training, but a lot of my friends, a lot of other alums that did get go through BFA programs, like they just had more yeah. textbook knowledge. So I was like, now I'm going to come in. I haven't studied. I, I've been acting professionally, but I haven't like studied acting mm -hmm. in like six years at this point. Um, but again, I kind of followed my gut and I said, sure, why not? Yeah. And uh, that slowly began the train of me switching my brain into like ensemble building and collaboration. And it wasn't too different actually from academic teaching, if I'm honest. Um, part of what I really tried to do with my biology classes and my science classes in general was really get everyone to ask questions yeah. um, and not feel like there is such thing as a dumb question, you know, cause I'm teaching physics and a lot of these kids are juniors and they're like, I'm scared to ask a question cause I don't want to look dumb. And I'm like, physics is hard. It's hard to wrap your head oh, yeah. around, <laughs> it's hard, right? Hard. It's hard to do the math in it and like see where the math even goes so i was like i was always telling them there's no such thing as them questions if you guys are just wondering about some random thing in the world and how physically it's you know it works like ask me we'll see if we could figure it out together right and those were some of my favorite moments teaching academically and then when it came to doing arts it was kind of the same thing we build an ensemble we make it a safe space so that you're able to take risks and you can ask questions Right. I'm going to be asking you a bunch of questions. That's kind of my, I guess, directing philosophy. Yeah. Is um, taking these kids and having them think for themselves instead of telling them what to say and how to say it, which a lot of kids kind of come from that when they're, because I teach freshmen. Uh, I, that was my first acting class, and I still teach that class for the musical theater majors at the school. It's, my, it's probably my favorite acting class to teach because they are so fresh and yeah. they are so excited, right? And like, yeah. and like ready for stuff and they come in with so much energy and you just kind of have to like direct it in a way mm -hmm. that prepares them for professional life and um, helps them stand on their own as an artist. 
uh, because a lot of the kids that, you know, get into the school, they have to audition. So they kind of come in with big heads already. Not all of them. <laughs> right. Like I got in, you know, I did like, it. They're yeah. like, I auditioned and I got in and I was the best person at my school and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, Mrs. Shelley, blah, 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 said that I'm going to be a star one day and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, okay, so we're going to all be together and no one's going to have like a, a, a monologue for the first semester. We're just going to learn and play with each other yeah. and just like get acquainted and learn that we are a group. We are an ensemble. We are learning and going through this experience as one unit. And they're all like, oh, okay. <laughs> and I think, I think that's probably one of the most important things to learn um, as just as an artist, period, right? Period. In, in most work, you're going to be with a group of other people. Like you're not always going to be, you know, the lead role or the ingenue in a piece. Like sometimes you are going to be in the ensemble. And yeah. so learning how to create work as a group instead of yeah. an individual yeah. so so important so that's, and, I, it's awesome that you're emphasizing that yeah absolutely and it, it's heartbreaking too sometimes just because like there'll be some opportunities in school uh like within the theater department just like student-led projects and stuff that my kids will audition mm -hmm. for and i had one student this year as a freshman come up to me and they were like mr z i auditioned and i didn't get in and they were like crying right and i'm like talking to him off to the side i was teaching academics at the time of course when you have to get into how much I've flip flopped and done both. Um, <laughs> but um, they came up to me and were like asking me about stuff. And I like, you know, having to teach that lesson on like rejection, right? And that it's okay. Yeah. And that there's going to be other opportunities and you just got to get ready for the next one. Because this was their first like project opportunity at this exciting school that they got into and worked hard to get in. And, yeah. you know, they were told no for like the first time um which is hard so um teaching that it's acceptable to make mistakes it's acceptable to ask for help it is acceptable to um not be in the spotlight and that you can still shine right like you can still be a valued member of a group and really an integral part of telling any story without mm -hmm. being the named character who stands yeah. in the middle of the stage and says yeah. all the lines nice and loud, right? Right. And yeah, again, a lot of students do come with that background of like, oh, their director was dealing with seventh and eighth graders. And so we'll tell them stand here and say the line like this. And so they, right. that's what they do. And then when they come into my classroom, what are they doing? They're getting a, a, a couple of lines of dialogue or a monologue and they practice it. And if they don't say it exactly the way that they practiced, they're lost, right? They're like, I did a terrible job. I didn't do it right. And it's about break, at least my job in that regard is breaking that down, right? And having them try to be thinking about it as artists instead of as like puppets on a stage. Yeah, um, I like that. Yeah. It's amazing. So I kind of want to shift gears to mm -hmm. um, you as an artist and as an actor, right, in Chicago, but also here in Detroit, where you work with the Black and Brown Theater. But before that, let's try our last taco. I know okay. I have one more different taco, but you have a um the same one. I'm coming back. I'm back to Bidia Town. It's going to be great. Yes. Now, could you like maybe tell us like a little bit about like why this is your favorite taco? I don't know if you have like a special like connection to it or anything like that. Um, I grew up eating tacos my whole life. I'm Mexican and Puerto Rican. My mom is from mm -hmm. Mexico. Um, so tacos are just like a staple um, in terms of food that we would get. Chicago is so ripe with Mexican food and authentic Mexican mm -hmm. food. Mm. But like we didn't really have tacos that much in our house. We would sometimes, you know, we have a tortilla with food almost every day. But we didn't always make like tacos like this. Yeah. Um. But birria is something that I actually wasn't really exposed to for a while. I just discovered a couple of years ago, in fact. Um. And since learning about it, it's just like one of those new things that really engage me and made me like reconnect and just rethink what I knew about my Mexican heritage. And then carne asada is like, come on. Yeah, yeah, it's right. It's a classic. Like I said, if, if if you can, if you find a place that doesn't do a good carne asada taco, then you're like. Wrong place. Find somewhere that's else. That's like the thing that you need to be able to do, right? Everything else is kind of a subcategory or like an offshoot of that. So um, it's usually like a, a 
the scale that I use, right, to determine whether I want to go back to a place. Yeah. Okay. So my first question for you, right, about you as an artist, as an actor, you know, in this present moment, mm -hmm. what have been, you know, some of your favorite roles that you've played, you know, recently, or maybe like a favorite job that you've had post-grad mm -hmm. um, that has just been really, really fun to use? Maybe it's challenged you as an actor or taught you mm -hmm. something that you didn't know about yourself. Um, I'd never done a musical before. I've always sang, I've always danced, I've always acted, but I never did mm -hmm. all of them really on the at the same time. Yeah. And a year after graduating and being a teacher, I heard about an audition for a um, production of In the Heights, which was my favorite show. It was the first show I saw in high school that not the first show ever, but like the first show I saw that really showcased and represented like my Puerto Rican uh, heritage yeah. and like, Latin, you know, Latinx culture and this idea of like speaking Spanish on stage and even rapping, which I wasn't huge into rap because of like my upbringing, you know, that just wasn't something that like my parents played a lot of or I was yeah. exposed to much. Yeah. But I did like rap. Oh, I got to get my camera back on. Come on. There we go. OK. <laughs> um, but I did. I, I love you know, I enjoyed it. And especially mm -hmm. hearing it like in my native tongue, I was like, oh, yeah, oh, like, this, this is, is something different. spicy. Yeah. This is something I recognize. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and in the Heights instantly became like my favorite show when I first heard about it, um, I still is my favorite show. And so uh, I got a notification through uh, just one of my friends on Instagram, like, hey, they're looking for people to audition for this, um, uh, this show. Uh, you should try out for it. And I was like, oh, I mean, sure. Okay, I'm a little young for Usnavi, but I'll go for Usnavi. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up getting cast in that as Sunny. Oh, that's a good um, one too, though. That's good Who is so fun, right? Yeah such yeah. a fun character and so that was um like my first dip into the musical world and it was such a big cast it was like 21 22 people mm -hmm. um actors not even just like production staff but it was with this company called vision latino theater company um and it was the weirdest thing because with such a huge cast and coming from an art school mm -hmm. not one person had beef with anybody else the whole time everybody like loved on each other we were all driving to the, the the like suburb of chicago to this like college campus where we were working with that theater out there yeah and just like telling the story so many of the people that were in that cast too um were of latino descent but also like had never been able to express that because a lot of the times one of their parents was like white or black. And so they were never seen mm -hmm. as any kind of Latinx, right? And yeah. so all of a sudden this was like their first chance to be like, oh no, yeah, I'm owning this, right? Yeah. I, I get to yeah. be like a white, sure, I'm white passing, but it's like, okay, I'll be a white passing, uh, you know, Dominican person, Puerto Rican person on stage, right? right? And, and really let that be me. And so just seeing that, um, witnessing that was just like a huge thing for me as an actor, just like seeing how a piece of art, something that yeah. you're working on can transform your soul. Um, and from that job, I got to meet some of my best friends. I got to um, connect with the theater company. They asked me to be an ensemble member. So now, even to this day, I'm officially a member of Vision Latino Theater Company. And we've gotten to do some really awesome work and have some really exciting things planned for the future. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to become one of Chicago. Chicago only has one Latino equity house um, in Teatro Vista, which is a great theater. There's a lot of good work. But it's just, it's the only one. Right? right. And so our goal, our mission is kind of to make our own space as a Latino theater company. Yeah. So that way we can uh, increase the quality of the stories that we tell in the city so that more people come to watch it. Um, yeah. And so that and, show opened that up for oh. me. No, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You had yeah. A question. I was going to say, I mean, that's a perfect segue right into, you know, your work that you've done and then just in general, right, the black and brown theater, because I think that's one of the mission statements for the mm -hmm. theater is giving representation for people of color who don't who aren't able to see themselves in plays and musicals and like different um works of art like that and so i guess my question for you right was like 
what has been your favorite part about working with the black and brown theater, but also like how you got your start in the black and brown theater. Cause you say you're from Detroit and I mean, sorry, not from Detroit. You say you're from Chicago and this is where yeah. the black and brown theaters um, based in Detroit. So I guess yeah. how you found your way here. Um, so it was in the midst of the pandemic. And one of my roommates was uh, the, the actor who played with Snobby at that time, Arik mm. Vega, right? I love him. He's one of my best friends. Yeah. And um, he, had again through Instagram had been like, hey, uh, one of these people, these directors from this company out in Detroit is having a casting call for like a prince. And he's like, and like, dude, come on. You're like, e it's you like, go ahead, just audition for it. Just, you know, be your little awkward charming self. And I was like, oh, okay, uh, I'll <laughs> see what's up. Um, and so that was when I first saw the um, name Black and Brown Theater. That was the mm -hmm. first time I saw Emilio's name and like got to read about the company and work about think about the projects that um, was going on. And uh, that first show was Mirror on the Wall. Yeah. Um, and so hearing um, this or like even looking over the the like synopsis of like, oh, instead of Snow White, right? We're not gonna do Snow White, right? We're gonna do Princess Raven. It's all about her being black and dark skin and beautiful and accepting that versus this like picture of Snow White and just whiteness as the beauty and innocence. And it's like, okay, let's spin that on its head. I loved it um, again, because it was like a company geared towards youth yeah, I was like, this is awesome. Like, this is exactly my wheelhouse. I'd never done youth theater really prior to this. Right. Um, I had worked with youth in acting and teaching them to act, but I'd never done shows, performances geared towards kids. Um, and I was like, okay, so this like is ringing a lot of different bells in my head. I'm like, okay, these are all things that like different circles that you work in, Josh. So like why not give it a go so i auditioned i was uh, lucky enough to get cast as um the huntsman uh hunter chase which is fun um and then got to work on a awesome um like work with an awesome cast a small cast of like what four people total including myself and emilio mm -hmm. and like our sound team and camera team and all that and then um you know it was uh because of COVID, it's really what allowed me to do it because I was still teaching acting at the time. Um, but because, and I I was just teaching acting. I wasn't teaching um, academics in, at this point mm -hmm. anymore. So because of that, it allowed me to teach remotely. Um, so I was able to go to, uh, it, this project was uh, in Ann Arbor, I believe was like stationed mm -hmm. out there. Um, just so Emilio didn't have to drive as far, I think. <laughs> but uh, we were stationed up in Ann Arbor and uh, Black and Brown Theater really hooked it up with like allowing, giving us a space to stay in and be comfortable and do our work. So I was able to just like teach my classes in the day and then we'll do rehearsals in the afternoon. And then mm -hmm. on like weekends, I would be able to drive back to Chicago and come back and um, just meet like hang out in Detroit during, or not Detroit, Ann Arbor during COVID, but like Michigan and that thing, we went and we visited the Motown Museum, just like Emilio yeah. took us around to Detroit to see a couple of the sites so we could get a feel for like this area. Mm -hmm. And uh, really just like instantly had a connection with a lot of like the Detroit space and seeing it in its relation to like Chicago. Oh, there we go. Right. And like making the connection of like large urban centers that have been, um, kind of certain areas that have been like forcibly impoverished and kept that way and uh, just seeing like how people are living and persevering and thriving despite mm -hmm. all of the circumstances that like you know make life hard um yeah. so uh, and meeting some like awesome people just you know walking around and then i got to do uh this the second show i did with black and brown theater uh, Rapunzel. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Which allowed I mean, me perfect. to actually be in Detroit. Yeah, we did. We did yeah. also. Before I get into that, we did do a live um, version of Mirror on the Wall that was in Detroit, and so for mm -hmm. that, I was living out there again for like a, a couple of weeks um, in the actual city with the rest of the cast, and so we got to explore the city more, go downtown, and like be a part of a lot of stuff. Uh, and then that's basically what, you know, Emilio then was like, hey, we're doing a different show, Rapunzel. Would you be interested in doing this? I've never had someone do multiple shows like this. And I was like, get me signed up, you know, like, let me, let's <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah, let's I do it. it. Let's do I it. it. Yeah. yeah. So 
I guess, you know, since we're all on the topic of Rapunzel, right? And that's like the mm-hmm. new big thing. The film's coming out soon. I so guess excited. What? Oh, I am so excited to see this <laughs> film. It's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. Um, But what do you think, what was it like creating a character for the prince, right? But then, of course, mm-hmm. like having this mixture of animated, but you guys practiced on stage. Like, what was that transition um like? So those those two questions for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, there is such a fun process, I think, when it comes to working with the theater, when it comes to working with Emilio, just of uh, like in my own directing style set, I've, I pick up from other directors that I have. Right. And Emilio is one of those who I picked up just like asking questions. Right. Like and just like asking your characters the randomest questions. Yeah. What about this? What's your favorite ice cream flavor? Does it ever come up in script? No. But like, why not think about that and have that in the back of your head? And who knows, maybe it will come up in some scene where your character starts thinking about ice cream because it's a hot day or whatever, right? And it's like, mm, right. mm, I want a lemon sorbet or something. Like, <laughs> like that is that is something that you don't think about, but really like deepens your connection to um, mm-hmm. that. And Emilio has uh, a way of, for both shows that I got to do, um, the early rehearsals were a Zoom, um and we would be yeah, familiar right and we would do uh <laughs> right. like group meetings <laughs> Here we and, are. uh we would get split up into different uh rooms and just like talking to a different character e- yeah. even that like i didn't think my character would have that much of a connection to right mm-hmm. it would be like okay now you guys do have scenes so why don't you guys talk about all of the different connections answer some of these questions why are you here how do you know each other how long have you known each other mm-hmm. and like even with um with rapunzel's dad like that whole uh, interaction started because me and cameron were like put into a room and then we had to like talk and figure out right like how how do these characters interact with each other how are they going to uh like connect and learn from each other and Mm -hmm. what is that relationship going to look like when it translates on screen right and so that was something that was a lot of fun that we got to do um and it was because of that process so what do you think your favorite part was working on the movie um definitely the costumes man costumes (laughs) (laughs) i mean no uh, the people again uh, i've been blessed that for both casts that i've gotten to work with like all of the other actors are so so fun um and they are like hungry and wanting to learn like everybody who was a part of it i think like you said shared that same like base drive of i'm here as an actor to learn whether that's because i just graduated from a bfa program like one of my actor friends did or like this is my i haven't really done professional acting ever and like i'm doing this here now and i'm like open and just learning like another cast member right like it's it's all about and then you know i'm coming from this experience of like i'm an acting teacher but also like i'm here because i'm in a different place with a different group of people and i want to learn right so everybody that came to the table was hungry everybody that came to the table was willing to do the work and put uh, themselves in the work um which is what makes it refreshing and makes it really exciting, I think, and and exciting to watch as well. Yeah. So I guess for viewers, right, who are going to be seeing this movie um, uh, soon, what do you think you're most excited for them to see or them to experience? But also, like, what are you most proud of about this piece of work? Um, I'm most proud of, I think, the nuances, right? Mm -hmm. Again, on-camera acting is so different from theater acting. So... I think that there are things that kids are going to obviously enjoy. They're going to enjoy the story. They're going to enjoy the, like the spectacle, the costume. They're going to enjoy like watching the story unfold with people that look like them on screen. I think that's going to be awesome and exciting, but I also think there's always something for um, adults to gain from watching these shows. Right. Um, And, and this one in particular, because it's on camera, that means that you get to see like the minute, things on our faces the unsaid things right right? and i think that uh, the whole team did a really good job of like showing and hinting at those questions right that that we as actors came up with but don't get to tell the audience um so hopefully hopefully the adults and you know the students that are watching will be able to pick up on some of those and and that's really what i'm looking forward to is just like 
seeing something that's a storybook, right, get translated into a uh, uh, film media. A hundred percent. Oh, that's amazing. So I have two more questions to you, okay. for you before we go on to our super speed round. Um, the first is if you have any pieces of advice for young brown actresses and actors who want to start into theater, get into you know film acting, acting in general, if you had any words of wisdom for them. Um, my main one would be find, well, I have two, I guess. And they're they're both people related, right? One is find some mentors. If you have a theater teacher, if you have um, even just like friends of someone that you know, right? Who like, or you did a show once and you know the director, like keep in contact with those people, be nice and like fun to everybody, right? That's why, well, I mean, that's probably the big thing. No one's gonna work with you if you're kind of a jerk. Right. right. So yeah, really yeah. being the kindest human being that you can that you can be and putting your ego aside and just like doing the work and love the fact that you're you get to do the work and tell stories is going to make people want to work with you. Mm -hmm. um, but um, like the first thing I did when I graduated college and I wanted to work professionally, I moved to Chicago and I immediately sent an email to all of my old teachers from Shy Arts. I was like, hey, uh, you remember me? I know you do. Uh, I'm ready to work. So okay. why don't we le let me know if there's any auditions, if there's any projects coming up, I would love to audition and be a part of like any of the work. And I immediately got like three responses from different people being like, oh, there are these projects. Why don't you audition for this? Uh, we don't have a show yet, but we're having one in the fall. Why don't you audition for that later? And that was like the first professional show I did was through one of my teachers. Um, so keep those contacts. Um, don't be afraid to ask for support, for help. Actors yeah. love, at least good actors, I think love supporting other actors. And so that's always something that's going to uh, help you. And the second thing is kind of along that same line, but just make sure that you have a community of people that is um, uplifting you and helping push you towards that goal, right? If you have people that are not going to, that are demotivating you, right? They're like, man, why are you doing that acting thing? Ugh, come on, yeah. man, like, come on. Like, that's kind of, that's kind of silly what you're doing, right? That's not going to make you want to do that more. At least not me. Some people, they're like, oh, well, I'm going to show you. Sure. But I think for me, at least, what was working a lot more was having just an amazing group of friends in my life that I've been blessed to have that um, not only, you know, would shout out different projects, but also just like encourage me, right, yeah. to take those chances to try something, even if I'm feeling down or something and life happened, right, they'd be like, oh, Josh, you got this, right? So having that support group around you is always going to be important. So I'm an introvert. I really like my alone time. And I took that, you know, during COVID, I, I, I really, really did. But mm -hmm. uh, there, there is a power in community and yeah. especially in theater, whether that's Chicago, whether that's Detroit, New York, LA, wherever it is that you're doing theater, even if it's in the middle of, you know, whatever town and whatever state you're in mm -hmm. or city in the world doesn't even need to be the United States. There's a power in community. And I think people do innately want to help each other. Um, so that's just something I would, I would, I would give advice on. Which is another good segue right into my last question, which is kind of what does representation hmm. mean to you? To me, representation is a matter of, I think, loving yourself in a way. Mm. Um, so much of what I think representation means in media and marketing and everything is you feeling comfortable with yourself and being secure in um, that you are a beautiful, worthwhile person. Yeah. Um, when you see stories and everyone who's told that they are good doesn't look like you, and everyone who is evil or mean or rude is depicted as uh, some stereotype or even, you know, sometimes something that you look like, right? That's going to affect your self-image. That's going to um, make you believe things I think that aren't true, right? Mm -hmm. And push a, push a narrative within a culture. 
Yeah. And that's why I love black and brown theater so much. That's why I love working with them because they're, they're, the mission is to dismantle that. The mission is to take these fairy tales that are, yes, originally from like Europe, right? Which like, oh yes, in the times most of Europe was, like everybody in Europe was gonna be light skinned, right? And have, or fair skin and have certain kinds of looks. But now that we're living in a global world where there are little boys, girls, and young people who, like look like everything in the United States, right? Yeah. We shouldn't just set one image upon them, especially when those kinds of folk tales are like the majority of what we see and talk about in our schools, in our media. Mm. Um, you know, Disney is rife with mostly European folk tales, right? We don't really have so many um, that are based in communities of color, even like Lion King, which is about animals. Sure. It takes place in Africa, but also that's based on Hamlet. So like yeah. you're still taught, you're still telling a white story at the end of the day, even though a lot of the actors are people of color, a lot of the, sure. The setting takes place in a place that's not Europe, but also like it's animals. It's like nothing to do with like the actual people and showing representation of people yeah. from that place. Right. Um, so I think, yeah, representation is like making you feel comfortable in your own skin, ultimately. Mm. Mm. That was good. What a great way to end, right? Like our big questions. Oh my goodness. That was, that was amazing. Thank you. Okay, so Thank before you, we, we wrap up, I'm mm -hmm. going to go into the speed round questions, right? Which are 12 questions that I'm going to ask you really fast. Give the first thing that comes up to your mind, whatever um, answer that you like pops up immediately, that's the one that you... Spew out. Okay. Are you ready? I'm scared. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Your favorite musical? In the Heights. As I said, um, easy. <laughs> right? <laughs> Actor that you're inspired by? Um, right now, Pedro Pascal. Ooh, good one. Good one. He's amazing. Favorite Disney movie? Oh, geez. Um, favorite just Disney movie? It could be Pixar too. Um, I think I think it's still um, I think Tangled is up there, so I'm gonna say Tangled because that's all I can really say right now. All I can think of. <laughs> okay, favorite Disney character. Uh, favorite Disney character definitely has to be. Um, I was like definitely has to be as if I had a definite answer right there. Uh, I'm thinking Hercules. I like Herc. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Favorite subject in school? Biology. Favorite Science. taco topping? Favorite taco topping? Onions. Describe the black and brown theater in one word. Community. Hard shell or soft shell taco? Soft shell. Dream. Unless, unless, sorry, unless it's a Dorito taco from Taco. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's a good hard sell one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dream roll. Oh gosh. Um Elliot in uh Water by the Spoonful. Ooh. Favorite Shakespeare piece. Macbeth. What is your go-to karaoke song if you have one? Uh Dream On by Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, what is the best advice you've ever received? Um, oh man, best advice I've ever received is pretty much Josh, stop thinking. I think <laughs> <laughs> just thinking too much, right? And overthinking, and having people, specifically acting teachers, come up to me and say, You need to stop thinking sometimes. So, yeah, love it. Well, thank you so much, Josh for coming in and speaking with us. It's been amazing learning about you and your story and your work. And we are super excited for the Rapunzel film to come out. We can't wait to see you in it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Montana.